I'm mean, incredible. How about yourself? Good. Um, uh, well, guys, we're here with Coach Chosen. This is episode <laughs> two. <laughs> and I decided to have a life coach on this episode because um, not only does he inspire and move people and really can get to the heart of things, I really wanted to have somebody on here that can ask the uncomfortable questions, ask the questions that are, you know, the hard, consider the hard questions or have like the tough talk. And so, you know, he's that person that can really pull that out of you and really help you kind of put a mirror to what you have in ask yourself. So, Coach Chosen, how you feel about being? That was powerful. Um, <clears throat> I feel actually excellent because to be in the presence of someone like yourself who's very passionate about what they do and to want to really pour into the people with a story that is life changing. It's really it's about impact and it's phenomenal. So I, I feel great. I'm just uh, ready to pull the best version out of you. I understand that <clears throat> your story is somebody else's survival guide. So with you telling this story, it can help somebody else see that they can versus they can't. So I'm just here to do what I do. Yeah. Hey, now. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to get right into it by telling you um, about experience. It's really like, it's a story. It's my story that I stand on. Uh, it's awesome. Okay. That I also um, So this experience happened uh, three years ago around this time. Okay, real quick, let me ask you. Why this story and why now? Um, okay, that's a good question. Um, this story is, it was funny because actually this story was one of the stories that I was, as I was editing, um, I lost. And um, and at first I really thought about just letting it go. You know, like, you know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't reshoot, I shouldn't film, I shouldn't tell it. Um, mm -hmm. And then it kept nugging. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I kept it kept making me feel like somebody needed this, and it was bigger than me. And so, before the year ended, I just was like, you know, putting all my energy into it. I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it, not just for me, but for the people that need to hear this. And now, you know, now is that time, that time to not only recognize our um, what we face, what we go through, but also you know, for other people to be educated on black trauma and black experience that many times people don't understand what we go through as black men and women. Gotcha. So walk me through a little bit of this experience. Tell us a little bit about it and then let's go through the day. Um, okay. So the day, uh, it was a cool day, actually. It was a nice, cool day that I went through. Um, it was a day that I, uh, you know, hanging out with my friends and having a good time and my energy was high, vibrate high. Mm -hmm. And I invited um, a group of people out. Um, and when I invited this group of people out, my only intent was, of course, you can have a good time and to us like to spread joy and love. Okay. Um, so we get to this place, this restaurant, and um, we're out, we're having a good time. Everything is kind of set up like cafeteria style. So, you know, the restaurant is um, like long tables mm -hmm. and there's like a patio outside and it was a really big restaurant. So like almost like a sports bar lounge type deal. And um, so we go in and we have a good time. We're ordering us some drinks some food and we're dancing, listening to the music and everything's cool. Mm -hmm. And so me and my friends, me and my friend, um, we both walk outside to get some air. Um, and it was um, these two individuals that were outside. Um, they were conversing, but you know, I don't know them, we don't know them. So um, we don't really, we didn't really think or see, we didn't think nothing of it. Mm -hmm. um, so we go back inside the restaurant and we go back inside enjoying ourselves and join um and uh, we all kind of start to cling together bring our drinks together say cheers and really like celebrate the moment well as we're celebrating the moment um gunshots go off so we mm. hear you know like <clears throat> bow, 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 like five gunshots go off that's crazy and everybody I mean, when I say everybody in that restaurant dug down, it was like 
it was like all of us had seen a war movie and we just knew our first instinct was to mm -hmm. duck down. Right. Now, granted, we were this was a majority in a um, the m many of us in, in this space, you know, were majority African American. So mm -hmm. I don't know, but we just knew like like we gotta we gotta duck and try to protect ourselves. So, um, well, when we heard that, then we ended up. Um, <clears throat> After we heard the gunshot, mm -hmm. um, I saw the guy. Uh, so I didn't duck. Everybody else ducked. Why didn't you duck? I froze. Um, when everybody uh, heard the gunshot, um, when I heard the gunshots, I, I my immediate mindset was, where is it at? Where is it coming from? I need to know where exactly it's almost like I need it's almost if it was a shoot to aim I need to know who's shooting mm -hmm. and where's it coming from so I ended up um I froze I stood up when I seen the gunshot it was a light that flashed before my eyes like a light like I seen the light come out the gun and that light was like it beamed in my face and when that man so he got hit in the chest mm -hmm. he got hit in the stomach and he got hit in the head and when he hit him, I saw every every shot go to this man's body and he fell to the ground. And I stood there and I couldn't move. So my friend came and she pulled me. As soon as he fell to the ground, everybody went from ducking to running. The front door and the back door is on the same wall. So mm -hmm. you cannot leave the building. You can't run outside. You're stuck inside this building. So we all run to the kitchen. Now, when they run, they're all running in one direction. We're already hiding in the kitchen. So you're talking about a storm peed of people running in this kitchen, running and trying to hide in fear. The guy that has the gun, he comes inside the building and he has a person in front of him and a person behind him. The person that he shot is laying out the, in his blood. You can literally see his blood like spreading mm -hmm. underneath his body like, and we we took the first the first moment that the guy ended up disappearing. We don't know where he went. All of us ran out, and when we ran out, I remember looking to my left, and the guy was laid out with his arms stretched out, legs stretched out, in a pool full of blood. Um, and all I remember is like this person is dead. It's a lifeless body in front of me, like. Mm -hmm. Like this person is dead. Like this, and I couldn't even get. Even, I couldn't feel anything at that. I was time. about to say, how, how did that make you feel? Like the moment you seen a body, <clears throat> a lifeless body, that you you've never seen nothing like that before. So you see a, a individual get shot three times, and he's laid out, lifeless. You see blood coming out the body. You're just coming out of a frozen state of mind. You couldn't move. You was in a daze. If you said you don't remember the feeling or how you felt, what was the thoughts going through your head as you're walking past his body? So as you're walking past his body, that's lifeless. If you can think back at the moment and attach a feeling to it, what would that feeling be? Anger. Why were you angry? And I asked that because, so again, this is a different perspective because the situation had nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they always tell us, don't get mad over things that you can't control. Mm -hmm. But that made you angry. Why is that? Because why would somebody just shoot him? Why would somebody feel the need to come out in a public place and disrupt lives? Mm -hmm. Why would somebody need to come out in a place and cause pain to not only me but other people around right why do they feel like they have that power it has so that's why that's what made me mad yeah and that's that's crazy <clears throat> Whew, that's that's some crazy stuff so you walk past a body you're angry um that you see somebody take somebody's life and you're right, you know, that's, nobody deserves to have their life taken, no matter what the situation is. What was your friends doing 
when you or you, it was with one person? Um, four people. Okay. Four five, yeah. What happened after you guys got out the out the building? We ran to our cars. Um, we ran. Everybody ran into. I mean, we ran as fast as we could. Uh, we ran to our cars. I called um, one of my friends, and I was um, I was having like an anxiety attack. I was. I was tripping because I'm like, they just killed him. They just killed him out of nowhere. We were just having a good time. They just killed him. So I ended up having like a, I think that was the first time. That was the only time I ever cried over it. Mm -hmm. um, the situation that happened when I seen it. Because I'm just like, like, why would somebody feel the need to like do that? And, and it just made me angry. Like it made me want to just like, it's just almost like when you see monstrous stuff like that, it, you almost have to not try to become it. Yeah. And you almost have to not try to become what you see. And because because you're so mad at how the world is, how the world is um, portraying and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And not only to, you know, it it, it, it just hurts. It, for me, it made, it, it made me angry. So when I went home that night, um, I didn't sleep. Um, I was finding ways to forget that it happened and trying to find ways to, I couldn't feel nothing. Everything, everything was like numb. Did you feel like you were a different person? Mm -hmm. Like you were, life was one way, one moment and in a blink of an eye, everything shifted. Do you believe you became a different individual due to that situation? Yeah, absolutely. Who do you think he became? Well, I felt like um, there's a version of a monster that's bad. Mm -hmm. And I felt like there's a version of a monster that is like a beast, like it's good that I can. And I said, if I'm become a monster and I'm gonna become a beast and I'm become this like I'm gonna let that be in my inner spirit. I'm gonna let that be the spirit that I carry inside of me that, that I use as a force to keep being resilient versus using it as a negative energy that I could, you know, pursue on people, but that didn't happen right away. Mm -hmm. um, I did, I didn't know how to handle what happened. So I did become easily angered, easily irritated, easily. The person I didn't want it to become, I became, and I didn't realize it. And it was easy to cover up. And mm. it was easy to act like everything was good. It was easy to act like everything was all right um, after it happened. It was easy because many times, you know, it's easy to mask things. We know how to mask things. So you just went into a bubble. Mm -hmm. I was a walking bubble. How did that make you feel? Knowing that you was never like that. And oh. you became the person that you didn't want to become ever. Mm. I was alone everywhere I went, even in a crowd of people. Mm. That's deep. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you could go back to the moment where the gun went off, if you could do anything different in that situation, because you invited everybody out, this is like, oh, I'm res you, you probably feel responsible for the night, like, oh, I invited everybody out, and then this happens. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? I was also mad at that. I felt very, um, I felt guilty, and I felt ashamed. I felt like, um, I honestly felt like, did I cause the negative energy to, Cause not only that caused trauma to me, people that probably never seen nobody dead before, you know. Now they didn't seen it, and that's the connection to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I went out with Christy, and there's people that there's people that literally looked at me and said, "Will never go out with me again." Wow. Never will go out with me again because of that situation. Um, won't associate literally nothing to do with me because when I went out, I saw somebody get murdered, and I never want to see that again. And I because of you, Christy. So I felt like low, you know? I didn't know how to fix it. I couldn't heal it. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, 
I didn't know how to navigate that emotion and that um, that uh, feeling of shame until, you know, it just took a lot of therapy. A lot of therapy and a lot of like, I think shame was one of the worst emotions. Mm -hmm. I couldn't overcome shame and guilt. I think that's the one that weighed me down the most because it's like, it almost feels like you're swallowing, like it's almost like a water balloon mm -hmm. is inside of you. And you feel like you're internally drowning and all you want to do is pop the balloon so you can just release the water so you can finally yeah. be free. And for me, um, it took me a long time to learn how to pop that inner balloon that was filled with so much guilt. Um, and it just took me forgiving myself. You carried a lot of weight. You, you took a lot of weight from that event that happened. You took the responsibility on yourself and was just like, hey, I'll take the blame for it when you didn't have to. So you, like, if you look at it, you put yourself in a state of mind to where you like, I'm, a, I'm in a bubble. I don't want to be bothered, I don't want to do nothing at all. Off of something that you couldn't control. And I know, you know, dealing with those friends, saying those things to you, that also made you feel some type of way. What, what was that next day like? After seeing the situation that happened, after hearing your friends say these things to you, like, yo, I'll never go out with you again because I, I witnessed a murder and it's your fault that I witnessed it. Mm -hmm. What is that morning like? Well, you said you couldn't sleep. I'm sorry. So yeah. you, you couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. um, I was hurt. I felt like if somebody can make you feel disgusting, that's how I felt. Almost like a walking disgust in mm. a sense. Cause it was like like people made you feel like like that's how bad that's how disgusted they felt from seeing that body. Mm -hmm. And then they poured it on me. Like not they, but that was portrayed like that's how I felt. Not saying that they intentionally did it. You know, they you know, we all in the in the feeling of the emotion. But I felt like disgust I couldn't I didn't really wanna put on a change, you know, I went through depression. So changing clothes was a big deal. Um, eating was a big deal. Um, doing so, like little things was ooh. a big deal. So these are brand new habits that you created. Correct. I went back into the, the bubble. Mm. And I was comfortable in that bubble. How long was you in that bubble of depression? Um, I was on, I was in a bubble of depression for uh, probably two years after that, a year, because anytime I would hear fireworks, mm. anytime I would hear anybody like uh, go, you know, like bang on anything, you know, it would just kind of put me, it almost puts me exactly in, in that, that spot. same spot where I froze. Wow. Um, and and it, it's taken me a lot to like overcome it took me. It took me a lot to overcome uh, what exactly um, I had. That the experience with, with the sounds I was hearing wasn't real. Gotcha. Like the fireworks were fireworks. The banging on the door was banging on the door. It wasn't the gunshots. It wasn't the. I had to really like tell myself this not real. This not real. But no, I. I the next day wasn't. Um, I, don't know. I just didn't feel like worthy. Sometimes I just don't feel worthy enough of living because you all all I wanted to do was bring good to people. Mm -hmm. My whole intention was to have a good time, have a have a a good a good night. And now I'm sitting in a room, and I'm sitting there like my whole intention was to just do good, mm -hmm. and something bad came out of it. And and it's not, and I, and I know it's not my fault, but I feel like something something and somebody has to be blamed for it. And so because I said I was okay with taking it, didn't mean that I knew the weight I would carry from it. Yeah, yeah. It's, like you, it's like you hurt yourself, not even, not knowing that you were hurting yourself because mm -hmm. you became a whole different person. You went to a depressed state, you're stuck at home, wherever you, you, know, wherever you was at. Two years of you not being yourself. So it's, it, if you're not, Raising the, you know what I'm saying, raising the bar, you're falling shorter. 
So you started to see your life on a, let's just say, a, a decline from the person that you wanted to be. You became who you didn't want to be. What helped get you out of that? Uh, realizing that the people close to me were being affected by my uh, trauma. Mm. Realizing that the people that I truly wanted to bring love and light to, I, I, I didn't, I couldn't. Um, the people that I wanted to bring the, I wanted to see the best version of me, they didn't see that. They didn't, they didn't see that. They only saw what I didn't want to become. And whenever I, um, decided to, um, once I kept hearing over and over and over again, you did this, you hurt me. You said this to me, you said this to me. Uh, you said that to me. I just, again, I just went back to that disgusting person from the night after the event I woke up not wanting to be again. Every day I was like, every version of myself I didn't want to become who came. And in order for me to grow, in order for me to become better, in order for me to become the best version of myself, I couldn't focus on just changing the world on the outside. Again, I can't mask. Mm -hmm. I couldn't mask because the people close to me knew they unmasked me every day. So the people close to me were being truly affected by me not getting help. And um, so those people were my inspiration. And those people close to me, because those people close to me matter. And me pouring into them just as important as me pouring into anybody else that I don't know. Mm. How did you, what actions did you take? Cause you say you got help. What actions did you take to help yourself break yourself because you had to be broken to recreate a new version of yourself um i did a body scan and i was like where do i feel hurt at the most mm -hmm. and i felt it in my heart and i knew that i had to take myself to extreme measures in order for me to like really tap into um who i was to heal so i decided to box it out and i went there and i hit the bag and i just pictured the bag as anything that pissed me off life you know the person that was the murderer mm -hmm. any any scenario a picture that was on that boxing bag I just went and I beat that bag and I beat that bag I went to therapy I found a coach I found people that were healed I found people who were healed and overcame what I went through but it wasn't easy at first because when I was going out getting trying to do it at first to get help mm -hmm. um when I was now, this is what I messed up at. I thought I was healed before right. I went to try to help other people heal. And when I thought I was healed, I was running into different scenarios that would trigger me and make me angry again. And um, I ran into this one scenario where I um, was out trying to talk about mental health, talking mm -hmm. about what I went through, my experience. And many times people will be like, well, that's normal in your community. Don't y'all see people getting murdered all the time? And it was very offensive because many times they look at us as black individuals as if that's our norm, that, that we are supposed to go through this. But then they label us as angry or ain't bitter, all these different things, but then tell us that, you know, well, this is kind of what y'all used to, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but don't be angry about it. Don't be bitter about it. You know, but then we don't, you know, therapy and mental health, all that wasn't introduced to us back then. So we all trying to navigate what we just saw or not even just for me, you know, other people in black history have experienced trauma. And oh, yeah. So for me, that's how I look at it as they were. It was almost unexpected because I'm a black woman that it's supposed to be normal in our community to see people get murdered. So what is it that you've seen from your perspective? Because they made the assumption, hey, you should be used to seeing this. This is this is what they put on TV for us to see all the time. So this is what people supposedly think that we see for the norm. But what is it that, from your perspective, that you see for our norm, being an African-American woman? For me, for the norm, I see prosperity, abundance, wealth, you know, um, education, being treated as a human being being treated with love, um, not looked at as a machine, mm -hmm. not looked at as somebody that 
that you know is supposed to be strong all the time. Not looked at as somebody that can't break, that can't bend, fold, not looked at it as that, to be looked at as just from what you see in my eyes and what my heart shows you and what I and what I say out of my mouth and the character I portray. Hmm. But many times we don't get judged for that. We're gonna get judged based off of, oh well, we seen, you know, we get we get almost compared to all these higher end you know, black women that are doing great things. Mm-hmm. And I will, you know, you, sh- you, you can be this way. You could, you could be like them. You could be like them. So we're labeled as always having to be strong. And um, many times we don't never get a chance to really like let our guard down and not be strong and to be free and to be able to allow our, um, whatever we went through, you know, to be that, um, it just an experience for us that we hear from. So, now going back to the question you asked me, my steps I took was I went to boxing, I went to therapy. After I was hearing people say this is the norm, I said I'm not going to let it be my norm. Mm. That's why I took those actions too. So I boxing, norm. therapy. I went, to, I went to yoga. Okay. Um, I sat down with a the therapist and I shared my story. So I talked to coaches like you. Um, people who are in a position to take my emotions and level at them and then take my anger and turn them into action and then take whatever is causing me pain and help me create a purpose from it. Gotcha. Go over the experience you had with going through therapy because a lot of us are either afraid of therapy, don't believe in therapy, May have never, may just be ignorant all in all to therapy. What is therapy like? Therapy is freedom. Therapy is like peace. Therapy is love. Therapy is like you got somebody partner with you on your trauma, on your feelings, on your emotions. That's mm-hmm. that's like in the fight with you. So you got somebody. So you gonna be like I'm depressed now. You got somebody like you know what. I'm going to combat every negative thought that come with depression when you sit down in my chair. You got somebody that's truly going to fight with you. Like, that's what therapy was for. And I, and I was heard. I was seen. I was felt. I was I was able to release it. I was able to stand on top of something that was meant to break me. Like, therapy was uh, magnetic to a whole new level of unlocking. So if I didn't experience what I experienced, I would have never even thought about doing any of the, the newfound love I have, which is for therapy. Um, it became my best friend in all different forms. Therapy is not just sitting down and talking to somebody. You got to find what works for you. I found what works for me. I found my thing. And my thing is my thing. Boxing is my thing. Yoga, beach. I found my thing. And you got to just find what works for you. It makes you you. Mm. Because many times your pain can really take you to, I, at least for me, I felt like it can. It, it could have taken me to a place where I could be unrecognizable. And to people that see me and recognize me, and I didn't want to be unrecognizable. The people that recognize and see me and know, and know my heart. Mm. And they judge me based off of, um, you know, who they know my heart is versus actions. Got you. And that's who I surrounded myself with. It was good for me to have a good support system. I had support system that, that never gave that never gave up on me. Yeah, you gotta have that top five. Like like T Mobile had. Who's your favorite five? If you wanna get better in whatever area, you find the top five people in those areas and then make them your best friends so that way you can get to that next level in every area that you want to grow in. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a copycat, it's cool, right? Because they tell, oh, don't be a copycat. They be on our tail about that, but it's okay to be a copycat as long as you're copying the right cat. And you took that experience that you went through. Why is it so important for you to give back and help other people break through their trauma to help them get to that next, uh, let's just say, level of life? Uh... It's important, um, I'll look at the camera too, but it's important because um, that you can really bleed yourself, um, you can really bleed your heart out. You can bleed your own heart out if you don't get get yourself together. Mm-hmm. You can truly, um, if you see life and you see pain and you see um, things that are not the norm and you don't know how to handle it, 
you can truly put a stab. You can truly put it. People will say, oh, a stab you in the back, stab you in the front. But you can stab yourself. Yeah. And you can truly let your heart bleed out till it gets drained. And you have nothing left in you. But you're just a lifeless, walkless body with no purpose, no hope, nothing else. You're just living. You're just a, a air. Mm-hmm. Come out your lungs, nothing else, nothing, nothing pouring out of you, nothing giving. You're not giving nothing back. You're just air, and many times, and that's the numbness that many people go through. And I wanted to help people live a fulfilled life, pour love and back back into their heart, and not to take, not to allow what they experience, what they've been through, to take them over, but take them above, mm-hmm. take them above what they ever had, a, anything that they've ever you know experience and to learn what to do when you experience pain and be emotionally grounded when it comes to pain so it was important for me to like let people know like don't allow your pain to make you a lifeless loveless individual that can't feel or experience real love or life Mm. what does this greater version of christy say to the christy that's out at a spot, there's an individual there about to shoot. They see the person pull a gun out, bop, 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 shots are fired. What do you say to that? In the, what do you say to that version of Christy? It seems like you're in an in, in uncomfortable situation. And it seems like what you just seen can cause you to go under and take you out. And it can seem like, you know, this is supposed to make you um, depressed or angry or sad. But that Christy, you know, you cry, feel, breathe, do whatever you need to do to get yourself back up and get yourself back together. But get back up. Get back up. Get yourself back together. And don't allow what you see in the life to turn you to take you over, turn your pain, turn this pain right here that you feel right now, turn that into something that you can make better, make somebody else better, but make you better. Who is Christy today? I'm free. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. That's a good one. I'm free. I'm free from the stories. I'm free. I'm elevating. I'm elevating. I'm ready to let everything that happened in my 20s be my stories and create new ones. Look, looking forward to more positive and healthy experiences. For sure. One thing I can say, though, if you're not walking in your purpose and you're following God, he will keep knocking on that door. For the people that are watching, there's going to be people that watch this that are from different walks of life, uh-huh. that have different types of trauma in their life. What is your your piece of advice to that individual that really wants to get the shell, the, the, the shackles broken from them so they can live the life that they truly deserve to break through to that better version, that greater version of their self, the one that's not holding herself back, that's not worried about what other people got to say, that's not worried, oh, well, if I do this, what, what, what if this happened? Mm-hmm. What, what is your, your piece of advice to that individual? Uh, my piece of advice would be to turn every negative thought and reframe it into a a um, a healthy what if. So my advice would be one to recognize that you are human and you gonna experience pain, trauma, realness, and that recognize you need a team, you need a support system, it's people who care about you. Um, emotionally, mentally, physically, but you need somebody that's going to push you. Somebody that holds you accountable, gives you no excuses over getting better. You need to find an accountability partner. Somebody that literally will say, you know what? I see the greatness in you and I do not want, I pray that you don't let this trauma bring you to a place to where you don't elevate. And so that's what, that's what I would say. The third thing um, I guess I would say to somebody is um, to to be to write it down. You know what I mean? Write down your story. Write down what you experienced. Whatever pain you went through, write it down. Share it. Tell it. Let it go. 
but don't let go of that version that went through that that story still take that version of you into your new journey because you know that version of you still um, that version of you is still you you're just an evolved version of you because you don't want to block out what you went through you really want to recognize yeah I went through that and I overcame that that's where you want to get to that point I went through that I overcame that like the Bible says all the time, you know, we come out not smelling like smoke. Well, when he says not come, they didn't come out not smelling like smoke. There are two people who actually were burning in fire and they came out not smelling like smoke. So imagine if you're actually burning in fire. Mm. You're coming out not smelling like smoke. So your fire is your pain. Your fire is your trauma. Your fire is what you're going through. Your fire is that that hurt that you're experiencing. And if you want to not come out, not if you want to come out not smelling like smoke, then yeah, I think that it takes um, that mental toughness and a decision and a choice to say, I choose this for myself.